Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,415. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,415 finished, or the start file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun Trick 183, we had a data set. And over here in the solution, we had to look up a particular item, in this case, invoice 1001, find all the matches in the invoice column, then come over to the item column, gather up all these items, and join them together in a single cell with a delimiter between each item. Now, back in trick 183, we used oil change data. In this example, we're going to use invoices and items sold for that invoice. Now, the great thing about hanging out on our online Excel team is below the comments in trick 183, Emin and Bill Sizzes posted some amazing Power Query code. We want to see how to do this same example, but with Power Query. And in this video, we will see text.combine function and table.group. The text.combine will, in essence, take these and combine them together into a single cell. And the grouping feature will allow us to look through a column, find all the similar items, and then group all of these items together. Now, this is the finished file. Let's go over to the start file. All right, now in order to use Power Query, your data set has to be converted to an official Excel table. I've already done that. I went up to Insert, click Table, or used Control-T. I also very carefully went up to Design and named it. Now I'm going to click in a single cell, and I'm using Excel 2016. And I have the latest updated version. And Get and Transform, which is Power Query in Excel 2016, and then this new group, Queries and Connection, this is new in the latest update. Get and Transform used to be on the right, and this Queries and Connection button used to be Show Queries and Existing Connections. Now, you could still use Power Query if you don't have Excel 2016, but you got to download for Excel 2010 and 13 and install it. Now, whichever version you have, the button to get this Excel table into the editor is still the same. It's From Table. So I have a single cell selected. I'm going to click From Table. Here's our query editor. And we're going to first see a min solution, which for most of us is awesome because it will allow us to just use the user interface. Now, we have over here our name. I'm actually going to change this name. Invoice and all items 01 and Enter. Now, here is our table. And we need to group by the invoice column. So we come up to Home, Transform, and there it is, Group By. Now, Group By is going to ask us which column. When we use Group By on invoice, it instantly in the resulting table will list a unique list of all the invoices. Then, because we want our little mini table, we come down here. And we're not doing the normal aggregate calculation like adding all the sales for a product or averaging or min, max. We're coming down to all rows. When we select Operation All Rows, it will deliver a mini table for each one of the grouped items. Now, I'm going to highlight this and call this All Records. Those will be all the records for each invoice. And Enter. And there we go. We get an individual table. I'm clicking off to the side, not on the table, down here for each invoice. Now, our goal is going to be getting at this item column. Notice it says all records for this column. So when we create our custom column to join all the items, we're actually going to have to say in our text.combine function, please go to the all records column. And then for each table in each row or record of this table, please go down and get the item column. All right, so you ready? We're going to go up to Add Column, Custom Column. We're going to call this All Items. I'm going to click down here after the equal sign, Text.Combine, open parentheses. Now, Text.Combine needs to access item, but we first need to say, hey, go look at the All Records column. 
That comes in in square brackets because it's a column name. But I'm going to say, for each one of the tables you find in each record, please get in square brackets the item column, close square bracket. So we're accessing the column because there's tables in each record. We then say, hey, get that item column. Now we comma, and the second argument in text.combine is the delimiter, in double quotes, comma, space, and double quotes. Close parentheses, click OK. Look at that. That is absolutely amazing. Now we don't need this column. Right click, remove. Now we're ready to load, but before we load, I want to go look at the M code that was automatically created. Go over to View, Advanced Editor. Now the way M code works is it says let, it has all of the steps, and then in and the very last step, since that's the item we want to dump into our Excel spreadsheet, we have to list that down below in. Now let's look. The first step is the name source equals, and then there's our function. Excel.CurrentWorkbook, that's the function that goes and gets our table from Excel and brings it into Power Query. Our next step, change type. And notice, each one of the steps over here, those names are the names of the steps and are always listed before the equal sign. Now, why do we have just text and then over here, pound sign and double quote? Well, if you don't have any spaces, you don't have to put pound sign or double quote. And to distinguish an actual step name from something like text, they had to add this extra character. So it's in double quotes, but the pound sign in M code means that's the name of the step, not just text. Now notice, this step we actually don't need. That transformed the data type. But our next step, group rows, there's the table top group function. Now we want to look at this function, because we're actually, in our next example, going to have to type this out. Pound sign, double quote, change type, double quote. That's just listing the previous step, which is a table output. That's our table that table.group's going to work on. Invoice, that's the name of the column we want to group. Now notice, curly brackets in M code mean list. And the reason it's a list is because you are allowed to have multiple columns that you group by. Now, we only have one invoice, but we still have to use that list curly bracket syntax. Now, the third argument of table.group is the actual calculation. Now, notice double curly bracket. That's because we can have multiple calculations done on our grouping. And each one of the individual calculations needs three things, the name of the column, the calculation, now each, and then underscore is the syntax for group all the rows. If there was a name of a function, we'd actually put our function there, then a comma. And then the third argument is type table. That tells us the type of this item that's going to be delivered. Remember, it delivered a table for each row. Then close curly bracket on that one calculation. And because there could be multiple, it has to be listed as a double curly bracket. If there was another one, we put a comma here and then curly brackets and whatever that calculation was. Then table.add column. And look at that. There's our text.combine that we use to combine all of our text. Our final step is remove. Now, if we were to consolidate this all into a single step, we'd actually start with table.group. And notice, that's just a table from the previous step. But we could just skip over that since we don't need it and simply put all of this right there, right into the first step of table.group. Then we have to list our group column. Then right here, instead of doing the rows, we're going to say each and text.combine. All right, let's click Done. Let's load this to the sheet. Close and load, close and load to. And this is new in the latest update of Power Query. It used to be load to, but they've combined the old import data dialog box and the load to. Now in the original load to dialog box, there was you can load it as a table, only create a connection. Where do you want it? And add this to the data model. So even though this is different than the load to, all of the options are still here.
Now I'm going to say click Existing, Collapse. I'm going to select D10, Uncollapse. Click OK. And look at that. Our unique list of invoices and each cell join together with our delimiter all of the items associated with that invoice. All right, let's see how to do this with the second method. I'm going to click in a single cell, data, from table. We're immediately going to come over and name this invoice and all items to and enter. Now, we don't need this change type, so I simply X it out. There's our source. Now we come up to View, Advanced Editor. And look at that, a simple step there, source. The thing that's going to be delivered to the cell is source because we're going to combine all the functions in one line of code. Now, that's just a table there, that Excel.current workbook. So I'm going to say table.group. I better spell it right. Open parentheses. Now, there's three arguments. There's the table, comma. We want to group by, in list syntax, invoice, and double quote, close curly bracket, list syntax comma. Our third argument is the calculation. Double curly brackets. The name of this is going to be all items in double quotes, comma. The second argument is our calculation. So we have to say for each grouped item space, we want to text dot Combine, open parentheses. And now we need to access our table and a column in that table. So we underscore square bracket item, close square bracket. Now within the text doc combine, that's our column of items we want to join. So comma, the second argument is our delimiter. Double quotes, comma, space, and double quotes. Now we close off text.combine. That's the second argument. There's the name of the calculation. There's the function, comma. Our third argument is the type of this column. Type, not table like our previous example, but text. Now, that's the end of our calculation. Three arguments, so I close curly bracket. Because we can have multiple ones, we have to list double curly brackets, even though we only have one calculation. Now, that whole thing right there, not including that stuff right there, that's the third argument of table.group. So I simply come to the end, close parentheses. And you got to be kidding me. That whole line of code will do it. Source, table.group, Excel.current workbook, text.combine, in source. When I click Done, there it is. That is absolutely amazing. The poet and artist Bill Sizzes with his efficient Power Query M code. Now we're going to go to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2, Table, Existing, Collapse. Let's say G10, Uncollapse. Click OK. That is amazing. Man, it's awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Amin and Bill Sizzes. We'll see you next video.